Question number one, who are you? I am Ian Burchett from Oswego, Illinois. And Ian, what do you do? I play professional disc golf on the Pro Tour. That is awesome. Um, so what kind of things in the disc golf space are dope to you right now? Uh, the, uh, the constant growing that the sport does and uh, the uh, publicity that we've been getting on SportsCenter and whatnot. It's, uh, it's been truly remarkable. And who in this space do you think is doing dope things right now? I got a few names I could think of. Uh, Gavin Rathbun, Noah Meinsma, Alex Russell, and Andrew Marweed. Some some names that really stick out to me. He's the best petter in the world right now. So uh, keep an eye out for those names. All right, Ian. And how can we support you? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at Ian underscore Burchett. Or you can uh, check out my website, ianburchett.com. There's uh, a lot of good merchandise on there for you to pick up. Ian, I really appreciate your time. You're an amazing person. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aaron. You're the man. You're listening to the Elevated News Podcast with two dope dudes. Here are your hosts, Dave and Aaron. Welcome to the Elevated News Podcast with Two Dope Dudes. We are your podcast focused on discussing local and national cannabis news and culture. I'm Aaron. I'm one of the Two Dope Dudes. I'm here with Dave. My, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other dope dude. Um, we're here. So what's what's up, buddy? How are you? How you feeling? I'm doing pretty good. How are you, brother? Dude, I'm I'm great. Uh, you know, I we got a lot to talk about today, don't we? Um, it's a big one, actually. This, the, I mean, yeah. Probably the biggest thing that everybody's got to talk about in Canada. Yeah, everybody's been talking about it this week, so we're recording a little bit later in the week, but that's okay. Um, you know, but uh, you know, get ready. We're we're we have opinions too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just um, like everybody uh, else. Uh, you uh-huh. know, I do. All right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can find us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all your other favorite streaming and podcast a- apps. Uh, please check out the Two Dope Dudes YouTube channel. You're probably listening to this or Spotify. Uh, please give us a like and leave a review. It uh, helps us reach more people. We respond to all the reviews. Um, you yes. Know, because, you know, that's what it's all about. It's all about community. Yes. Um, you may also, please, if you will, email us at two dope dudes podcast at gmail.com for all your questions or things you would like us to talk about. You may also obviously comment on the YouTubes or is there commenting on the other platforms? On Spotify? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, There's like an interactive poll on Spotify. I don't think many people, I don't think we have much engagement there, but that's okay. I don't use it. So I I don't either. Okay. Well, that's even better. So, but we're on all the podcast. I mean, there's distribution and um, coming soon, support dope Nice. Yeah. I like that. Um, please, if you don't mind also, you may check me out at Peace, Love, and Cope on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, I do stream live on Mondays uh, from 10 a.m. until noon and Thursdays from 8 p.m. until when we're done. I will be there to answer any of your questions you have about cannabis and how you may use it as a medicine. Um, I will try to help you take your health back into your own hands. Heck yeah, do it. So, yeah, let's get into it. We got, uh, speaking of uh, YouTube comments, let's, uh, you know, <laughs> dope person of the week was uh, Lillian Stadler, and she is a gem. I know you didn't get to meet her because you were uh, I think at the tournament. I think showed up just at the second that they were getting done. Yes. Yes. Yeah, right around there. Um, but, yeah, she's super awesome. That's uh, my buddy Chad's partner. Uh, Chad, uh, you may remember I went out to his garden, talked about it. Yep. Good buddy of mine. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. That's so, awesome. Um, so, so yeah, we got a lot, actually, we, you know, we got some views on this one because people love Lily. Yeah. Let's so, go Lily. Yeah. Thanks for being a part of this. Yeah. So she was the dope person of the week and she was, uh, she was fun to interview during the podcast at the thing too. So love green culture said she was my favorite guest. Her knowledge of her craft blew me away. A very intelligent, talented individual and very articulate. 
I love the fact that she touched on the home grower craft and an advocate for us cultivators versus the big corporations. I wish them nothing but success in their endeavors. You actually know her because she did the puppy chow. She's the puppy chow. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. That's fire. Yep. A double fire. Yep. So, yeah. And then uh, Rochelle said, uh, this girl is my favorite, which Rochelle is correct. Because, yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. Um, Lillian, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, Just Baking Goods on Instagram. Uh, and they have a, uh, uh, their website is going to be dropping January 1st. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, heck yeah. Super cool. Um, yeah, we also have some comments from the pancakes or waffles debate the great pancakes or waffles debate which uh, was not... pretty handily waffles i i like brit's take on this yeah if there were better frozen pancakes i'd be fully into the pancake camp egos really do set the precedence for um the waffle talk you know yeah you can't really like what do you call it toaster a uh, a pancake but you sure can toaster an ego. You can toaster an ego. God, it's so good too. If you remember during the it's uh, like nostalgia. Yeah, during the during the pancake or waffle debate, I said I know somebody who loves egos. Yeah, like, all the time. Dude, that fucks with some egos. I know. Man. Um. Yeah, we got an- waffles. Another waffles waffle. Wins. Yep. Dudley waffle. Mm-hmm. Dudley Love is also culture correct. Waffle. Yep, waffles. What's that? I'd pegram? I'd d pegram? Uh, uh, that's uh, probably pegram. Okay. That's my mother. Oh, hello. That's my mother's account. <laughs> and def- her, and, her and my stepdad. Hi, mom. Yeah. Uh, happy. She's a waffler, too. I got, we got no pancake support. I think there was a couple on the poll on Instagram that I made. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. There was yeah. a couple. Because I do, I mean, there's something about just layering up a pancake i mean but we're not talking about frozen pancakes or waffles we're talking about waffles or pancakes yeah see but that's the thing is at a restaurant sometimes waffles are just too big and they're not like it's not an ego oh dude i'm i like you know what sunday morning sunday morning at nickery's get the waffle man like it's it's on like like, i don't even i I get like bacon and a waffle you don't need to get all the other stuff i like a i like a crisp waffle i like a nice something with a little okay bite to it french toast or pancakes fuck i mean god for the rest of my life i never have the other one but i'll probably take pancakes for sure again no yeah, I mean, like, dude, it's just French, it, toast. Uh, uh, French toast. There is a superiority in some cases. Well, we didn't make the distinction that it was for the rest of your life, pancakes or waffles. It was just pancakes or waffles. But you only have one for. Well, I mean, but that's the whole thing. If you got to pick one or the other, it's like I get one or the other. Yeah. And if I you guess. mean to tell me you're just surviving only on waffles for the rest of your life, you don't ever get another pancake at all. I mean, I, I, I don't I, know, dude. I would, I can't remember the last time I ate, I ate a pancake. I can remember the last time I ate a waffle, though. Or French toast. Do you get sad regularly? No. Do you, do you cry at night no. into your pillows? No. I it's just, because you don't eat pancakes, dude. No, That's dude, why. I like waffles. <laughs> wow. What we a have, terrorist. We have, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jeez. Um, I like Akbar. Well, Insh- inshallah. <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> Uh, I'll, well, I'll, I'll Akbar. we got, uh, you know, yeah, so, the old, anyway, the great, the great pancake versus debate. And I, you know, who knows yeah, I was, what you're okay, into. Cool. I'm a pancake. I'm glad though. that the I'm people, always gonna offend it. I, I appreciate everybody, uh, everybody's support that was behind me in the superior choice of waffles. Uh, everybody. I literally I mean, have nobody backing. I think right. you had like two or two or three. All right, on you two Instagram. folks out there on you Instagram. Know, if you would have you. participated in, in the Instagram, it could have been more. But it's all right. <sighs> I mean, it wouldn't have made a better case. We're still not winning a, in votes. I don't know. You. I mean, you. Uh, you can be pretty persuasive. I mean, you. Uh, you think worldwide there's more pancakes getting eaten or waffles? 
probably crepes, right? You know, crepes, imagine. very yeah. tiny, very tiny pancakes. Yeah, but it's got to be pancakes. I don't There's think there's international don't think it has house pancakes. of pancakes, not an international house of waffles. Yeah, but that's better anyway. I don't know. And they turn the fucking waffle maker off at two o'clock always. You, you can't go into a fucking breakfast restaurant and get a good waffle late in the day. This is bullshit. Sometimes you just have to wait a little bit longer for the waffle iron to heat up. I mean, yeah. Touche. Yeah. The pancake iron's always on. I guess. Just a little bit of heat. <laughs> Facts. Facts. I'm just saying, you can get pancakes all the time. Oh, yeah. Um, listen here. You know what you can get sometimes is um, well, caught. Slash busted. <laughs> you want you want to go right to news? We got a, we got a whole bunch of stuff in the middle of there too. Don't, oh fuck! There's yeah. a lot. Yeah, I forgot. Jeez. You, you, well, you scrolled past it. I did. It's okay. I was I was so pumped. I was. I ready. mean, there's, Brother, there's there's this actually is worth. Yeah, it. there's a little bit of uh, prep work involved. I I do I, I I do some prep work. So I uh you know just so the a great deal of well just so everything goes you know fairly straightforward. You know, but it's all good. This guy gets it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So last weekend we, uh, we were at the, uh, outdoor farmer's market in St. Charles and it was super awesome. Uh, you showed up after your disc golf tournament. How'd you, you, you shot what down to for both rounds? Yes. And well together. Yeah. Together. I, I, um, played better than I scored and I got more intoxicated than I could handle yeah. at one point. So it was, um, you know, it was, you it was always, just for enjoying the day. No, I know. And I know you like to do that. Um, and it's not like I haven't, you know, obviously seen you guys do that before. Do you always like, uh, compete, uh, elevated that way? Not um, always, I've but... never, I've, I haven't done a bunch of competition before, so I wouldn't say up or down. Yes or no. Um, but after the first round going the way that it did and me, I, I like, enjoying the moment a ton and when my brain starts to overthink things or when i'm too racy in my thoughts i would far rather slow it down and enjoy the day i'm disc golf and i don't care about a competition necessarily as much especially once i'm out of the competition so so you're like if if you're in it then you want to be in it but if 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 you're going into it and you're like eh it's whatever i don't want to think about uh, you know, how I should be competing. So you just change is, is I'm, I'm not trying to like, no, it's backseat you. I'm just, no, no, it's, it's just, it's far, um, it's just more enjoyable about for enjoying you. the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Like, yeah, no, I, get yeah. You. I would. And like, I don't think that I would have enjoyed it less or more or anything. I, I loved how the day went, oh, yeah. but, uh, for me, um, yeah, the, the 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 competitive bug exists inside of me, but there's also a reality to yeah. some of what I got going on too. And a like, thousand percent. I'm no, not going to stress myself out and overwork myself to get to the point of letting myself down also again. And if you set your expectations realistic from the beginning, then you probably have a better chance of succeeding at the end. And a thousand percent. Yeah, my my goal was to enjoy the day and oh, cool. enjoy the day. Oh, I did. Yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, like I totally uh, understand that line of thinking. That's why I was trying to ask because yep. it was like, yeah, because I'm not going into, you know, if I'm in it, like, you know, sometimes I shoot decently well, but yep. most of the time it's just like, well, I even bother and worry about it and just have fun and throw, throw some good lines and <clears throat> try and have fun. It's even why before getting into this competition, while talking to people about competition, I was pretty comfortable stating that i am i'd I'd rather play a casual round and enjoy the people that i'm around i enjoy consuming cannabis not that anybody prevented me from doing so while i was out on it's a seat here uh, right right and i you know i'm able to be respectful about everything anyway if you're not into it i'll walk away from you and never have you um smell anything or or whatever but we're um, very discreet yeah i am also very open (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind uh, letting yeah. you know. So, uh, yeah, no, that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah. So we, uh, we had a uh, the support dope people roundtable, and it was sponsored by Bob's Exotics. Uh, thank you to Bob for those RS11 doinks. They were super good, and we uh, smoked one during. Were, well, 
<laughs> and then uh, it was presented by the Little Bean Smoke Shop, who uh, was gracious enough to let me set up a little table and a tent in the back behind everybody and not charge me anything and just let Thank me you. record. Thank you, Little Bean. Yeah. I, uh, Charlie and Rochelle, they were on the podcast. Oh, um, yeah. Charlie big shout Rochelle, out to uh, Marky Love. Since you were um, at the tournament, I asked Marky to uh, co host with me. And he did a fantastic job, Marky. Thank you so much. I think Marky and I are going to do some stuff in the future too. Hell we yeah. might do some like growing stuff, growing podcasts, Hell maybe. Yeah, yeah that'd uh, be super Marky cool. was fantastic, um, and he was there with me, uh, and we interviewed Charlie. Uh, excuse me, Charlie and Rochelle, um, and then Chad and Lily, and then you came in. Um, you got done with the tournament, and you came out to to hang out for a bit. And we interviewed uh, Chris from Crop Culture and uh, Jerry from Illinois Worm Farm. Loved them. Yeah, great. they were great. Awesome guys. Yeah, super, for sure. Super, super good dudes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I honestly, like, that. I love that group of people that come out to those events. Yeah, they're super cool, man. And it's, it's all about the community. And, you know, I know you're not a grower, but, like, everybody out there is growers so it's like you just want to show up show off your stuff and like be around you know other people who are like you you know yeah and it's hard to get away especially if you're a real grower it's a routine every day you have to go do stuff every day in the garden like i'm seeds right now yeah. or seedlings right now so it's like every day in the garden gotta go water gotta go water it's gonna be all of that again until you know a couple months how much physical time is required in the garden per day to keep a because you got four plants going yeah i got four seedlings going um once they start once they start going it it probably anywhere from half an hour to two three hours every day no shit it it well maybe not every day but like you're there you're defoliating you know depending on what time you're mixing Yep, things or you're getting slow. things ready yeah. you know what i mean like um for me it's it's closer it's on the lower end um i guess if you had to like before when i was using nutrients and having to ph the water yeah, yeah, and mix yeah, the yeah, nutrients yeah. and you can't just mix them together and go right, right they've right. got to be room temperature you have to be a certain order it would take me an hour an hour and a half right. every day just to mix nutrients you know what i mean yeah, dude, that's why I switched to organic because for me, having a large bed of soil with all the amendments in there yes, and just have, you know, worm ben, poop. Yeah, worm poop. Yep. I dude, do. That was I, so I, much, I that actually, was a great conversation. Yeah, no, I, I have some uh, Illinois worm farms. I've been using them for a couple of years or a year or so now. They're great. That's awesome. Yeah, so that was super fun. I'm, I'm glad you came out and had a lot of fun. Um, we did some dabs afterwards. Shout out to Bob's Bob. for sure. Guys, the, if you don't, check out Bob's underscore exotics on Instagram. He man, is. He's, he's the man. They are a great group of people. He yes. is the man. Um, but he, uh, all the love to you, sir. And yep. I, I look forward to watching you grow and to see your successes. Uh, yeah. He's doing a great job at what he does and um yeah he's Dude. he's he's killing the game out here in the suburbs it's you know what i mean cool to see him doing what he's doing and he's he's just doing more and more yeah yeah he's he's gonna be yeah i bought you a little david davidewski from bob dude i got cooked up yeah there. i had everything hit me at once i was cooked up there for a minute but um yeah i mean he's got he's got some heat yeah, he's got some heat. He brings the fire, so. He brings the fire. Yeah, shout out, uh, real quickly, shout out to Roy, uh, Grow Better Chicago, Michael, uh, Bonkster 420, David Graff, Fire Ferments, Sandwich B, Cracker Seed. These are all the, the Gromies. These are all the, the cool dudes that I got to smoke doinks with and stuff, and I got oh, to yeah. hang out with afterwards after you left. But yeah, it was super fun. So, you know, uh, that'll be coming out here pretty soon. And uh, it was fun, and uh, we're going to do more of it. So, hope you like it. Fuck you. Yeah. I is a fan. Cool. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's get into the news. Now. Sorry. I had to get all that out real quick. Dude, that's actually fire. Wait yeah. It. 
you know, there's some great people. That, I mean, um, they were all, it was all about, uh, you know, just people local in the community that either were business owners or just, you know, uh, grow people or like, you know, just people that need to be supported that are doing really cool things that are just starting out and, you know, shout out to them. It was fun. Mad love building cannabis culture for the future. Yeah, for sure. Sweet. Um, yeah. So yeah, this is a good one, right? I kind of I giggle. Well, I mean it it's sucks. wah 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 wah. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, Chicago men behind enormous. This is enormous, according to uh the count the Country Herald. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, enormous U-Haul cannabis bust. Yep. Seven hundred plants uncovered in Illinois home. Oh my God! I bet. Oh. M G. I bet they're not medical growers. O M G. Jesus. Um. Yeah. I think once you get to a certain extent, you become definitely not a medical grower anymore. It's after five plants. But yeah. Yeah. A routine traffic stop in Kankakee led to the discovery of a colossal cannabis operation in Bonfield with approximately seven hundred plants flourishing inside of a home. You know what'd be really fucking weird is if these people went into any one of the cultivation centers. Oh yeah, maybe like how many seven hundred plants might be in one room. Oh yeah, and then they might have sixteen fucking rooms. <laughs> you know, so anyway, oh, yeah, for sure, you can go on YouTube and watch like, uh, what is it like? Uh, they got some like uh, YouTube stuff where they go and look at all the cannabis dispensary. It's been yeah, years it's since I've been in a cultivation center in Illinois, but I saw what they were already built out to be. Immediately speaking. And then what the potential expansion um, size they had available. One of the places had a million square foot uh, footprint so that they could build up to be a million square feet. At yeah, some and point. they just put racks and racks and racks and racks and racks of, you know, racks. Wow. And then, yeah, wow. just and get them on a forklift. Yeah, once. Get them on a, on a picker. What's crazy, what happened in uh, Colorado was because they were limited by by square footage or whatever they started growing up because mm -hmm. it wasn't cubed feet it was square feet which mm -hmm. just means the floor so in their 5,000 square foot or 10,000 square foot whatever warehouses they were They're allowed like to 90, have 90,000 square feet of pot yeah they, they went up in the air about four fucking stories and well yeah you know. with all the rack lighting now like I have rack lights in my in in my tent yeah yeah and, but they mount they mount right on a like an actual rack and like those are easy to get yeah yeah yeah, no, it's, um, I, it, so again, 700 might be colossal that's in the terms of, of what, in your house. a lot of plants. But you got a that's big a whole, ass house. That's a whole house. You got, you, but dude, I, I don't even genuinely think that I could put 700 fucking plants into this house. I mean, could we? Yes. Are Hold you on. going to take a shower and move around at all? I don't think. I wonder, do they say if it was like 700 flowering plants, like are these 700 oh. flowering at one time or is this like. They a got 650 clones. fucking clones. Yeah, and like, oh, they probably got, no. like, realistically, oh, like, no. how many you moms can you take care right. of? How many moms are you taking care of? Like, come on, that's oh, a lot. Oh, no. You're probably fucking right, dude. See, according to fucking Hersher police, it all unfolded around 2.15 p.m. when officers pulled over a U-Haul truck for a minor traffic violation, but what started as a routine encounter took an unexpected twist as officers detected a distinct odor of cannabis emanating from the U-Haul vehicle. You know what's really great is um, Illinois almost made it so that uh, the smell of cannabis didn't... Um, oh, yeah, but of course, you know, that didn't happen for us in right? Illinois. Right. I mean, it was a proposed thing. It was yeah, actually... There's a lot of proposals. It's already written so down. Seen... It just never quite caught the fact that yeah. a K-Meg K-9 unit uh, was promptly called to the scene and confirmed the presence of illegal substances, alerting officers to the potential contraband. This marked the beginning of a meticulous search, revealing numerous bags filled with cannabis plant material discreetly tucked away in the rear compartment of the U-Haul. The initial discovery prompted K-Meg agents to swing into act. Oh, they swung into action like they were fucking uh, Batman and Robin. Yo, yeah, like Tarzan. <laughs> hey. Oh, jeez. Hey. I'm just like sitting here waiting. You know, Disney likes to change all the uh, the new live action people. Yeah, yeah. I dare you. I dare you. Dare you to change Tarzan. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Please. All right. I mean, you know, like, come on. Yeah. That'd be, 
<laughs> I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm into what you're into. Yeah. Um, I'll edit that out, I'm sure. I'll, no. just, I'll just beat that. People will be like, what? Why is he? If you know me, you know why I said that because I have funny thoughts. Yeah, we um, the fucking swinging into action. Swinging into action. Swing, there. swing on into action, baby. Mm-hmm. Execute you a search warrant at yep. a nearby Bonfield residence. The outcome left law enforcement in awe. An expansive cultivation space teeming with approximately 700 thriving. thriving. So that's thriving. That that's, means they have green on them. It could have been still fucking clones, dude. A clone could, could be been. thriving according to fucking oh, yeah. manipulated speed. Yeah. I mean, it's like, green and growing and it has. Well, obviously, it has to be over five inches to be considered a plant, right? Isn't that what they consider a plant? I don't know. Ask the ladies out there. I don't know. Over hey, five ladies. inches, is that considered a... Yeah. Anyway, uh, the accused have been identified as 46-year-old. Okay. And 30-year-old. Okay. Uh, both <laughs> hailing from Chicago. I was wondering if you are going to try and pronounce their names. Not a fucking chance, man. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, do you want me to? Like, I don't know. They sound like they're from Shenzhen, my, China. My Yi Chai um, My Choi. My Yao Choi. My Yai Cho. And Zai Yao. Wait, I got the wrong fucking letter first, Steve. Yao Zong Yu. Yao Zong Yu. They could be uh, Korean, too. I could be. All right. That, that I mean, might be Korean. I don't know why the fuck I fucking. Yao yeah. Zong Yu. I don't know why I tried to be Asian when yeah, I said this shit, right. too. Calm down, Shane Gillis. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, you're oh, gonna get us canceled, man. Shane Gillis. Just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that got Shane Gillis fucking fired from fucking SNL. Jeez, oh, Louise. No, both individuals have been charged with production of over 200 cannabis plants. Wait, I thought there was fucking 700. Wait, no, the the, uh, the charge is uh, probably uh, it, 200 it, or it, more. 200 or more. Oh, okay. I'm I'm betting. Underline the magnitude of their alleged involvement in this illicit operation. Illicit. Both suspects are currently in custody at the Jerome Combs Detention Center awaiting a bond hearing. Well, that's fun for them. That's a lot of plants. That sucks. Yeah, well. Sucks for them. Yeah. I mean, that's why we advocate five, that you get a should fucking medical license get a medical and grow license five plants and grow five plants you can go like you there's even like nugs good. md like there's a website called nugs md like you know like we went over that last you know how easy yeah. it is to get your thing yeah. actually i talked to uh some i was talking to somebody the other day and they're like yep i'm gonna get my uh medical license now because yeah, you so i listen to the podcast and also uh shout out to marky who is like i felt personally attacked when i listened to the last podcast I was like, good, <laughs> good. You should because uh, it just, yeah, the whole thing was about you, kind of. Yeah, I mean, but that's was... what it's all about. You know what I mean? It's about our community, our friends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, we went over the uh, smoking thing and how Marky had said, uh, "Hey, oh yeah, that was the other one. He was right. the one who uh, deleted his uh, right. comment." He said but that was much... that was a couple podcasts ago. Right. It's all right. But yeah, he's gonna get his. He's gonna get his uh, time of fame. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, I did just close that fucking... It's okay. We can go right okay. to this one anyway, because this is the big one. This, this is what we got to talk about. This is the one. This, yeah. is what, this is the moment you've been waiting for. All right? This is from Marijuana Moment. Yep. Y'all know we love to talk about their stuff. <clears throat> Moon... Illinois News Joint and Marijuana Moment are probably the two best, podca- or best websites out there right Easily. now. Easily. Easily. Yeah, shout out to Jason. Yeah, let's go. Um... Moving marijuana to Schedule 3 could have sweeping impact for businesses, federal employees, research, and more. Yep. And, um, yeah, we're going to try to... Synopsize. Th- yeah, give, give the this. synopsis. The synopsis. Yeah, the synopsis. Of what is going on here, because it is an extensive... Um, breakdown. Article. Yeah, this article it's, it's got a good breakdown. Um, so yeah, we're we're recording a little later in the week, uh, but that's okay because it's holiday weekend. I um, hope you're enjoying your Labor Day weekend. And we this breakdown be. just came out today. a few hours ago. So yeah. 
This is of, perfect. Yeah, a bunch of people already talked about it. You talked about it on uh, on Peace, Love, and Cope uh, earlier when Biden uh, wrote the memo saying that he wanted uh, uh, whoever to look at uh, rescheduling marijuana, and it's taken a long time. Yeah. Uh, but that's how government works. It's very slow, and very rarely does anything ever the government ever take over get better, cheaper, or more efficient. Right. 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 So anyway, this is what's going on. Uh, It looks like they're going to be rescheduling marijuana down to Schedule 3, which means it's uh, about as uh, they believe it is uh, as uh, dangerous as like, I don't know, uh, benzodiazepine, um, ketamine, anabolic steroids, Tylenol with codeine. Um, Still highly regulated. (coughs) Yes. And not permitted to be sold without a DEA license. Correct. And that's, which would be freaking weird for the state level medical programs. because and, and it hasn't even happened yet. This is, this is all, you know, we could have another, uh, you know, a new COVID and then they just not do anything. And this then, is, you know. this part right here rescheduling would not would not make nope. adult use cannabis business legal nope. under federal law nope so again yeah because you of can't the go biggest sell things that all of us are, right and, and that's exactly what it's saying or tylenol with codeine for yeah. that fact right um i mean you can but like you can't go make a business doing that you can't go rent a storefront and be like i'm selling anabolic steroids right and ketamine and tylenol yeah yeah well yeah, you need a pharmacist, yeah. and right. Um, it's just a. It's wild that it's a nothing this burger. This is the thing we're trying to push for. It's a nothing for. burger. Yeah, is it's what nothing. It is. Uh, <clears throat> if uh, if you know, until it is descheduled and uh, everybody in America can grow their own cannabis, we're not. It's not legal. It's not free. We're not free. Oh, a hundred percent. And this is the other part that goes with it that sucks is, um, and while medical marijuana might become broadly legal, if the change goes through, that means that from, from coast to coast, doesn't matter. You have to have a a medical program for cannabis. Uh, most states would need to overhaul their systems in order to strictly align with the schedule three restrictions, which is the whole point that I'm saying is you would have to now get a, excuse me. DEA license yeah. to sell your shit. Right. So it's just a, it's not even helping. It's breaking the medical system. Well, it's, it's including marijuana, uh, you know, like we said off air or like I said to you off air, this is nothing more than just, uh, allowing other, uh, doctors and, and the government to make more money on this. You know, this is, this no, is the, the other cause, the cause other then, players want to put their fucking hands in the cookie yeah. jar. Because they're like, well, we just descheduled it like eight years ago. Like we can't do anything about it now. What do you mean we, to tell me barely... fucking state level state level um governments are making billions of dollars a year on this? There's no way uh, we're not we've, making that from the old crony well, station. We're thirty one trillion dollars in debt. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well Yeah. But I mean, and and end all wars. <laughs> And of course, how about it? I mean, a hundred percent. Fuck the military. I'll say it right now. Fuck the military industrial complex. Fuck the government. Fuck them all. We need less of all of it. Free market, baby. Free market, baby. Free market, baby. Let's go Mises. Oh man. Um, it just, this is, this is when it gets to that point where all of us have been going, okay, do it, do it, do it, do the fucking thing. And then you do this, and then it's Remember like, when God, Clinton was president, bump your head like, off a wall. There was like, when Clinton was president in the late 90s, like, you know, there was a whole bunch of like, canvas crackdown, and then it was looking like, you know, maybe they were going to ease up, and then like, it's, you know, it's 20 years at a time. I mean, it's crazy in our lifetime that we see legal, quote unquote, cannabis. Like, we're, it's awesome. But yes. I, don't, I don't think it's going to get much better in our lifetime. At this point, nearly everyone who watches the cannabis space agrees the changes will be historic, but there are different takes on what exactly the changes could mean various aspects of the law. That, that's the whole 
it plays exactly into what you were just saying. Like, it's cool to see some of the progression because yeah. progression is necessary mm -hmm. in this space, especially for all of us who know yeah, what the fuck is really going on. But then, like, you is it progression? Are we like this thing here? Schedule threeing this thing could literally be taking not even two steps back to go one step forward we could be taking fuck tons of steps backwards yeah, sure. to to literally take one step forward and the one step forward is the deschedule it or the res getting away from fucking schedule one which is the we already know it does that's the most absurd thing yeah arguably that we are all force fed in our entire lives and if you don't see that that's when it's like you know, you follow right behind what Aaron said. It's like, fuck the government at some point. If you I'll can't literally allow us to use fucking cannabis, right? Like, then what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. That's a smart move. <laughs> it's, you know, all right. it's all right. It's all right. Yeah. Not a big deal. Yeah. Anywho, we had a fan on in the room, and I just turned it off because I realized that it was on. And that will okay. just be a it's... nice little background hum for Aaron to remove later. Yeah, for 35 minutes and 36 minutes. <laughs> 36 minutes. It's cool. No, I, it's oh, actually uh, audition makes it pretty easy. I can just, like, low cut it, I think. Sweet. And it's on the lowest setting. Too, yeah. So it's, so it's not, not like it's the least loud. loud that it could be. It's not like the uh, construction we had here earlier, the terrorists that well, came and, and yelled at you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. the background noise so at the advertising old. and mailing rules actually uh that's that is better uh i know people who actually this affects them because they work in the cannabis uh um, marketing industry and so uh you know uh one of their comments is that there's you know rules for every state that we operate in and it's like this has to be this that this that so this could ease up and be better you know don't let perfect become the enemy of good Right? So, yeah. Uh, looks like. Wow. That's yeah. really, I'm actually reading that. That's pretty neat. So it's like, um, there, there is a prohibition against placing anything in any newspaper, magazine, handbill, or other publications, any written advertisement, knowing that it has the purpose of seeking or offering illegally to receive buy or distribute a schedule one controlled substance so the usps can't even deliver let's say um a, a local cultivator wanted to send out uh sales papers which you can't right um, right you can't because of this right here but that would change immediately and then for the people you know who have advertising jobs that would make them far more in demand so that's yeah, very for sure cool. so that's good and we have friends who work for the usps too yes and it would be super cool for them um because to, to be able to smoke marijuana yeah because that seems like something that would be a reality because federal they walk workers a lot. they walk a lot correct um the the, the executive order mm -hmm. um that Reagan established. Um, yeah. Thanks for the war on drugs, Reagan. What an asshole. Um, if that, that is, that is where everything kind of took and went tits up and there has been zero reform to this executive order since the day. Yeah, that so this it is the went out. federal drug free workplace program. And the order defines illegal drugs as only those in schedules one and two. So some attorneys believe rescheduling to Schedule 3 could lift marijuana restrictions that currently apply to all federal workers. So I'm sure it would probably still be prohibited, but, um, I mean, they may have individual mandates in the three-letter three letter agencies that don't deserve to exist anyway. Um, probably disqualifying, you know, marijuana use. Yeah. I'm betting. Yeah. Well, and I... You although, know. although wasn't all the, wasn't the Homeland Security, wasn't all those articles out about like they couldn't find enough like new computer workers because of uh, marijuana? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I don't know. Yep. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. Well, and they, so it, this is the thing that you will hone in on. And, and if this thing goes schedule three, 
um, which descheduling or whatever is going to it has to happen if it goes three. Um, you will still see dry counties and places oh, yeah. that still I mean, don't still allow dry it. Counties and, for alcohol, it's crazy. Right per individual agencies, you're able to adopt your own policies regarding drug use, right? Yep. Um, but most of them now are still rooted in that fucking regular executive yeah. order. Well, so, that's what they point to. They'd have to have something else to point to. Yeah. So at this point, um, it seems as though perhaps, you know, there's a chance. I, I think the only reason also they're doing this is because it'd be real sweet if instead of a presidential debate, they had a presidential smoke session, bro. I mean, I I don't even. I mean, they're not. They're barely going to have a presidential debate this time. I think. Yeah. We'll see. Well, they they should smoke weed every day. Smoke weed every day. And just, I think it'd be real cool to see the potential candidates well, all come together. They're so old; they might have heart attacks. That'd that be would like, be that would be fucking awesome. Like that kind of like the Hunger Games, like Mitch McConnell backwards. just 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 stopping. <laughs> Again, he did it yesterday. He stopped again. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know what? The people who uh, take care of him should be charged <laughs> with uh, elder abuse for not getting that man to the hospital when he's clearly having problems. <laughs> oh, that is uh, very. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, hey, you know who would benefit from some weed smoking? Right. Good old Mitch. Good old bitchy Mitch. Bitch Mitch. There you go. Um, yeah, well, I would, again, I, hopefully, um, if you're a federal worker, um, yeah, I just know way too many people whose, um, main sole purpose for not consuming cannabis is their job. Yeah. I think a lot of them hide behind the fear of consuming cannabis because I think there's still this, like. I don't want to do that. I don't want to get high. I don't want to get intoxicated well, on a, in a capacity I mean, we that met I couldn't somebody, handle. We met somebody last weekend that was like, I believed everything Bingo. everything that was ever said about marijuana. But like, Bingo. you know, spoilers, it's Jerry from the worm farm. Bingo. Uh, but he's like, but everybody's like opened their arms to me and uh, we don't see, like, I don't see fights and like, it's kind of crazy. And like, I also know medically, like it helps somebody that I know. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, I understand it's a little off to me because he's an older man, but, you know. Yeah, and he's a, he's just a, <clears throat> he's a good old boy. He's a farmer. He's fucking farming worm poop right now. He was now. in he's operations. A, I think he was a truck yeah, driver. Yeah, truck driver, I think yeah. is what you said. Yep. Yep. Um, good dude. Yeah, a, amazing human. But, um, yeah, but there's, he, he, there's it, still he has, people. Well, and he has partially a decent enough reason to maybe yeah. not because he's intimidated that it will trigger something that he yeah. has medically existing already which is right. cluster headache and i respect that but in the same capacity if you were dealing with a cluster headache outbreak i would tell you using cannabis may be a viable option yeah. at that point you know i agree using a low dose thc which is again like things like that i don't know i could talk about that, obviously the medical side it's but all it's, right it's just low dosing yourself up and getting to the right place but once this thing gets rescheduled and and it's are more accepted from coast to coast, I think, then we have a better chance of some of those people finally coming on board, you know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, into that, uh, research. This is cute. Yeah, this is this would be uh, what they say is sweeping changes for cannabis research, removing many of the barriers to obtaining and using cannabis for scientific investigation. A key Senate committee recently noted that the drug's Schedule One designation means scientists face limited access to sources of marijuana, further hobbling research. Uh, true story. Shout out to like uh, uh, Carbondale SIU, uh, the hemp farms down there. You know. Um, yeah, they you know, that would that would probably open them up to being allowed to uh, grow marijuana and not just hemp. Um, and they're doing some good stuff, but we'll talk about them later anyway. Um, yeah. So anyway, the committee also expressed appreciation for the uh, National Institute on Drug Abuse for completing a report that outlines, outlines study obstacles posed by the scheduling complications. So they raised some concerns, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
Oh, hey, this one also, she's on the same par with psychedelics as, yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Which, you know, I may very well be on board with it, too. I I uh, think at the same rate, if we're going to oh, yeah, schedule should, three cannabis, you might as well just should, clump fucking. You should just look at the bottom of the LSD podcast and prep list. Marijuana. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Mushrooms as well. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that. <laughs> oh, just say it in here? Uh, look at the podcast. Sorry, inside baseball. Yeah, look at the podcast prep sheet. Scroll all the way down. Look at that very last link. Yeah, baby. Yeah. You like that? Oh. Okay. Awesome. So let's get through this though. Uh, state cannabis laws. So basically, uh, Schedule Three rules would also still stand in the way of researchers trying to study the cannabis available on licensed adult use retail markets in legal states. So it'll allow them to get better, probably sources. But again, with most of this, is not going to do probably a whole lot for them. Yeah. You know, let's see here. Okay, so state cannabis laws. This is this is this the is part the that I'm yeah. sketched out about. You, well, then you get it. Well, as the past decade has shown, state and federal cannabis laws often say two very different things. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, but DEA putting marijuana into Schedule 3 on the federal CSA could nevertheless trigger changes in state laws. That's because in some cases, state laws themselves follow the federal CSA. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, essentially, some states have triggered laws that make the state's scheduling cor uh, correspond with a schedule change automatically, and then others don't. I think uh, that was shown uh, during the like Roe versus Wade thing where some of it changed over automatically and some of them had to uh, write laws. And right. then, you know what I mean? So it's going to be very similar to that. Yep. I believe. Yep. Uh, it requires not in, 50... You know what I mean? I'm not saying... No, no, no. I, 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 monumental, you know, I'm just saying it's... Comparably, I get Comparably, the, that's I what the I mean. To anybody else can, out there, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, Sometimes no, I, I are bad at words. <laughs> no, I, I bad it up it. <laughs> uh, so it requires a 50-state analysis of which states do it automatically and then making sure that's implemented. And then the states that don't, the legislative and administrative process usually has to happen. Um, so for she likened the process to the one scene after the FDA approved epidolics, yeah. yeah. a purified version of the cannabinoid CBD. Yeah. Shout out to, uh, shout out to that. Yeah. I, I mean, epidolics is awesome to a degree. I don't yeah. understand why, um, I don't know what else goes on with that. If it's pure plant-based CBD and there is no other carrier inside of Epidolics, I'm perfectly fine. But I have seen the, it was for, uh, might have been Epidolics. I used to have the, um, and I might have it somewhere still. Now I'm thinking about, man, where the fuck is this thing? But I used to have the um, drug interaction chart oh, yeah. from Epidolics. Oh. It was bigger than the roadmap for Illinois. And I'm not fucking around, dude. Like, I flipped it out, and I was like, holy shit. Now, it's got tons of different languages and whatever, but I was like, what the fuck is this? It was huge. I started reading through the thing. I'm like, like the warnings on the thing yeah. were crazy. I'm like, this is not a CBD warning. This is like an FDA, like, yeah. well, we that's put some happens. other shit in here warning, you yeah, know? Yeah, didn't get that with the jab, did you? Yeah. But you didn't get that warning list. No. No. Mm -mm. Good old government. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, federal rescheduling would likely spark a cascade of changes at the state level, most related to medical marijuana, which is why you should get your medical card. Yeah. Um, the... That would actually, yeah. Um, one state level matter that could become relevant on the West Coast is how the federal government's shifting posture on cannabis might change the math on interstate trade. California, Washington, and Oregon have all adopted laws that under certain conditions allow the states to enter into, enter into agreements to allow marijuana commerce across state lines, see Las Vegas. Exactly. Washington and Oregon's, Oregon's laws both require a change at the federal level that would allow such cross-border trade, which 
in appropriately regulated medical context, context rescheduling might be. And now, under California's policy, the state attorney general could also trigger the implementation regardless of federal considerations, but he won't. In January, state regulators requested that Attorney General Bob Bonta prepare that guidance. Yeah, I, um, yes, on top of what yeah, they even just said there is there are the licensing process that states have set up to make it so that you are state compliant yeah. may not fall in line with what they have done at the federal level to make you federally compliant. Right. And there are so many different verbiages of state regulation on cannabis. Each state is different from each other state. And yeah. though. Well, that's how some, America works. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. But so, saying, though man. some policies have been shared across borders, and now especially because once Illinois came on, a lot of people actually took They're Illinois' like, cannabis no law. Yeah. And they were like, Dude, if they can sell it for 60 bucks a fucking eighth, we're going back to that shit. Yep. And that's pretty much what happened across the board. Yep. Now, now it's, you know, um, we've set the precedence for what cannabis probably is going to look like in the future, weirdly yeah. enough. Unfortunately. And then there'll be uh, the good ones like Michigan. I do think you're still going to have some Wild West stuff, but the problem with that is if this becomes a Schedule 3 thing, and I, there was an omnibus act passed that stated no federal funds would be used to interfere with state um, regulated cannabis programs. Right. But if this comes out, Schedule 3, and they, they deschedule it and then change up some of the verbiage in um, Reagan's executive order or whatever, and you have to because it's whatever, it, there, you run the potential of kind of fucking some things up. Or, yeah, you know, a thousand percent. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm trying to think at like all the implications of There's... what it could mean in a state level, especially that is using this thing. Because for me, like re recreational adult use, it's just the dumbest way to explain this thing, and it doesn't really make as much sense as like. You either fucking do it or you don't, right? And it, I don't care your age. I don't care really anything. I think everybody has should have the right to access this plant, especially because I don't see an instance of prolonged cannabis use that isn't somewhat medical. Right. Right? Like if you use every day, you use because it makes you generally more comfortable. It makes you less, it's like a fuck it all. And yeah. if you use a fuck it all, that is literally medicine. So we we first take care of head. But that, jeez, couldn't have said it better myself. But um, so yeah, for for the, I hate the words medical and recreational and adult use and whatever. Fine, adult use might be the word there that like I'm more okay with because yeah, I would be more the okay developmenting with brain of a child may not necessarily benefit from um, the interjection of cannabis, but there are so many that it does benefit because they actually have medical conditions I would say, that it's hard to say up or down. I yeah. think if you just want to use it because you want to have a fucking good time, fine, 18, 21, do your fucking thing, right? But I mean, wait till you're 26. 26 I mean, is when the developing brain yeah. stops, so I'm I'm on board there too. Yeah. Um. Unless you, unless you medically need to use it as uh, somebody under 26, like I mean, that you have seizures or something like that, uh, you know, you should probably wait until your brain's done developing. But, uh, you know, we also all smoked. Most I, of us smoked underage anyway. Correct. So, that you was know, 13 or I was 14. Like 16. Yeah. And 15, if we 16. look at the rate of, I mean, anxiety that exists in the world, depression, whatever. But then we talk about, I mean, well, I we, think, we could go off the deep I end. I think kids these days have more problems than going out and smoking weed. Do, do you ever listen to The Coddling of the American Mind or read The Coddling of the American Mind? Mm. Are you familiar with? Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Okay. Um, the Coddling of the American Mind is, and I can't remember his name, but he states um, the facts of how social media has pretty much broken interaction amongst children. And how because of the um Greg Lukanoff and Jonathan Haidt. 
Yeah, Jonathan Haidt. That's the guy. <clears throat> Jonathan Haidt is a badass. Um, oh, are the, these are the ones... A... No, wait. These are the guys... These are the guy. I'm pretty sure these are the guys who made up a bunch of fake studies, submitted them, they got passed, and then they wrote a book on it. I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they were, really. Yeah, I think so. Let me check. Modeling of the American Mind. Yeah. It talks about suicide rate in younger children. Um, it talks about the rate at which, um. God, that'd be crazy if that was. I, was. I mean, there are two people who did that. Yeah. I don't... Oh! You know who was doing that recently? Yale and Harvard. I, I don't know if you saw that, but it, they really were. There's some, like, fake-ass studies going on, and they were making their own studies up, and then... I forget what the teacher was saying, but they were, like, showing DNA coding, mm -hmm. and you can clearly see side by side, like, it's just a shifted picture, or, like, somebody came in and photoshopped in, like, a little bit of a blur or something. Right. It's like, what in the fuck? It's really bad. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah. Um, cannabis as a interjection for the societal pressure that exists for children nowadays. Uh-huh as an alternative to what I saw my friends in school receiving is I think drastically better a chemical and drastically better for the long-term development of the brain than some of the things that a lot of my friends were eating through school, the Ritalin and the fucking, uh, whatever, all, all the methamphetamines that were get going on at that point. I mean, I'm, I'm pro those. I, I understand, and I'm not ag I know, against we don't have long to, term. We're talking yeah. about in in a young child. Oh no, I started when I was like five or six. And I understand that, I and that's my mm -hmm. whole point is because the chemical dependency of that is far more drastic than that. Oh yeah, for of sure. What cannabis is, and when the outcome could be relatively close to the same. It sucks that we use the one that is so chemically dependent in the yeah, system. Yeah, well, I mean, I started smoking pot early. I mean, I wouldn't say that it was uh, uh, better than uh, my medicine. Um, I think that I needed to go through a lot of things and learn how to, uh, both on medication, how to deal with things. And then I was off medication for a while, and I learned how to deal with things. Uh, and uh, cannabis didn't really help or hurt either of that. I think I needed to figure out how to, you know, cope both ways. And then now medication just makes it easier. It is not a cure, no, but it makes no. it much easier. You know I mean, what I mean? I'm just uh, saying. That, that's it, just me yeah. personally. Intoxicants are a beautiful well, thing. And to put. I'm just saying, I think it's important <clears throat> to do the inner work as well is is really my point there is, is, 1, is you can you can use or you can use anything for whatever but unless you're actually doing the work and doing the inside work then it doesn't matter what you are or are not taking you you will always hear me say yeah. that the the way to health is number one through your head right period so you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fully on board. You get the head right, and then the rest of the health can follow behind. But um, And sometimes, you know, uh, though adding a barrier in between the electrical signaling that our brain is naturally wired with um, can help and alleviate, we also sometimes have the cognitive capacity to um, deal with those electrical signals and rewire them yep. even to be Better. more effective. Yes. Correct. And it's not that they're not broken, but they can be more effective. Oh no, mine, mine are definitely broken. I, so, uh, and I, I get it, brother. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not no, a reality, yeah. you know, I, 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 just, I liken it to like, uh, it's like when you have a hundred pirate ships, but you only have like five docks, but they, they yeah. all have to come in at the same time. So they're all j yeah. jamming into five docks. Yeah, and you there's a I mean? bunch of pissed off pirates. Exactly, that's exactly what I mean. That's bunch what it's of like. Pissed off pirates. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, and I, <laughs> I, I, I fully yeah. understand. Um, and and it's the same thing too. I mean, once there is a medical condition, medical condition doesn't leave. Right? Yeah. So it's not, 
it's not to say whatever. It's how we handle and deal with them sometimes. And I think that if I could change one thing, and I've said it forever, I yeah, I love to have, help people take their health back in their own hands. It's kind of noble, whatever. But yeah. I would love more than anything to change the perspective of how children and cannabis interacting together looks on paper because there are unbelievable amounts oh, yeah. of benefits I'm, that I have seen come from this thing. And I... Um, I would love nothing more than to kids to get some cannabis slash CBD candy and then not the, have to have epilepsy. I think 100%. That's, that's like if you can, you know, 100%. if you can do that for one person, oh my God, like you've I, changed somebody's life. I think with that's these awesome. so societal pressures also that exist, and I've even heard some of my close friends, children speaking on um, inside schooling, um, yeah. to have a comfortable place in your head where you're not so fear responding because right. everything seems to be triggering nowadays especially for the younger ones yeah um you're able to exist in a more thoughtful mindful clear space and yeah. maybe though there still might be a hundred pirate ships and only five docks now at least you got somebody out there with, with some fucking paddles trying to tell people how to dock and do the fucking yeah. thing, right? You got somebody out there playing referee to all the well, chaos. I think, I think part of that is that, uh, A, most people are not present enough in their own lives. They're just caught up, and they haven't done the inside work. Um, and then if you have kids, you have to, like, talk to them about that stuff. You have to, like, huh. talk to them about, like, oh, you know, like, you know, you just you know, so everybody feels like this and, you know, we just, it's about how we deal with it. And so we're just going to go do it. And then, then, you know, it's cool. And then you've done it and there's nothing that, you know what I mean? Like you have to be able to like talk to your kids intelligently and raise them intelligently emotionally as well. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't yeah, you know agree I mean. more. I promise you yeah, I couldn't no, I know agree you more. I, I mean, I, that's because I'm always correct. So, well, you know, yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, it'd be awesome. So political impl implications. Uh, let's see here. With the federal government formally acknowledging that cannabis has medical benefits and is no longer among the class of the most dangerous drugs. No kidding. And the move could lessen stigma towards marijuana use, especially for medical purposes. Uh, the HHS rescheduling memo is momentously large because, as Hauser pointed out, it represents the U.S. government recognizing that cannabis contrary to the definition of a Schedule One substance, has currently accepted medical use. Uh, so, <laughs> though the acknowledgement comes years or decades after many patients, voters, and even elected officials arrived at the same conclusion, it's nevertheless a historic milestone. It's, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, so, you cracked a bunch of old stones. Yeah. And then you tried to tell me that there's a beating heart inside of yeah. it i don't think so i think that these fucking old cronies found their fucking dollar bills and they're ready to go they don't give a fuck about medical maybe treatment. maybe well biden did this at the beginning of his uh presidency so maybe like that's the one thing he remembered to do and then now since he's just like you know i don't think he remembers much i'm saying maybe that's the one thing he remembered in the beginning did he write it down on the chalkboard? Well, no, he, he told the guy to do it. Oh. So, like, maybe it was, like, it was on his memo, and, like, he got that done, and then after that, like, you know, the White House took over. Oh, touche. Yeah. It's whoever like, uh, whoever, whoever the White House is. Whoever, whatever aliens inside of him. Well, it's like when, 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 when he was like, oh, yeah, we're, like, uh, you know, like, if it's not Ukraine, it's Taiwan next, and we're going to have to go do that, blah, blah, blah. And then the White House was like, an hour later to like the white house's stance hasn't changed on the one china policy and so i'm like okay who's the white house because joe biden just said this like an hour ago and now you're releasing say, something saying something completely different the, who's the white house that's what i want to know not that guy i guess not mm -hmm. anyway anyway neither here nor there that's not this podcast yeah right we're just being silly having fun yeah the um th there is some implication for international treaties as well yes um the DEA, not historically a friend of cannabis reform, um, one element of the agency's analysis will be shown a Schedule Three decision would play under international drug treaties. Um, so essentially, the the Canada transfers, 
I think somewhere in the like, uh, we could look it up really quick, but I want to say it's like 500 billion or it's either 50 billion or $500 billion worth of cannabis. Oh yeah. A lot they of cannabis export in Canada. the fuck yep. out of that stuff. They send it everywhere. Yep. Send it to Africa. They send it to mm-hmm. Australia. Mm-hmm. They send it everywhere. South America. Send They're me, send me your African strains, please. <clears throat> That'd be fire. Oh, yeah. I said that on the two podcasts ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I want some, I like. I want some. Yeah. I want a real, real dead ass, no fucking around. I would love some fucking, like, straight out of the Russian wilderness, like, ruderalis plants. That'd be dope. Get Dude. some of that uh, Chernobyl weed. Oh, well, yeah, I don't know about the Chernobyl weed, but, yeah, Ruderalis plants are pretty neat in comparison to the other plants we see, Sativa or, or Indica, according to standard yeah. at this point. But So what rescheduling would not do? So it will not broadly legalize or even merely decriminalize the drug, which was, uh, it says here, a key campaign pledge that Joe Biden made when running for president. As such, several drug policy reform groups say the step doesn't go far enough. Yep. Yep. We all know that. Um, it doesn't qualify as the Biden administration keeping its campaign. Everybody says you should deschedule it. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much also what we're saying, which is why we don't really need to go too much over that because everybody's just saying that we're right. I mean, I mean, that's, that's the synopsis of that. Are you, are you not? I mean, we are. Yeah. It's not going to release anybody currently incarcerated for marijuana. It's not going to expunge any marijuana-related r- records. Uh, it's not going to address the immigration-related consequences, which is, I guess, a leading cause of deportation to immigrants, uh, deportation of immigrants in the U.S. or restore eligibility for public benefits such as housing and nutritional assistance for people with marijuana. Uh, whatever. Um, yeah, it's it's re- again like like we said, it's a, it's a nothing burger. I mean, it's, it's, um, some things will maybe get better. Some things will be more complicated and, um, the prices aren't going to change. You're not going to be able to grow. It's just, uh, many were encouraged by the improved prospects for cannabis research and the ability to make federal tax deductions. Sure. Sure. Those are good things, but could be good things. Others said Schedule 3 could in fact have negative implications for the industry as cannabis itself would remain federally illegal. Yeah, it's just descheduled. Illegal. They're just changing it on the list. Potentially allowed only for narrow purposes. Yep. And the narrow purposes being we want to make federal money. money. Yeah, <laughs> we want to make money. It's just as plainly stated as you could ever see and just that's it yeah. so and we all know this it's not even like a and literally everybody's like that's fine you can make your fucking money just do it fucking right fuck a schedule three d schedule a son of a bitch all the way yeah d schedule it jesus h jesus h and, until until we can all grow let us all get a fucking peddler's license yeah. already make every single person in america a fucking a business overnight yeah you right. Produce your own shit overnight, and then you could sell it. To well, there's <laughs> still people out there, uh, apparently, you know, putting fentanyl in marijuana or whatever. So, you know, don't hang out with fentanyl, friend. I know that's weird. I I saw somebody say that they actually knew somebody who did that, uh, or or like knew somebody who like OD'd on fentanyl and weed. No, like on, you know what I mean. It was like an actual yeah. like. Uh, article or something GTFO. and i was like there's no way i the, you, how, yeah i the fuck do you get fentanyl i like unless you put it on there on purpose and like what kind of that's if what you i'm put saying fentanyl on marijuana on purpose you should you Who? should be locked in a cage for the rest of your life does fentanyl come in a crystalline form i guess so i don't even know how the fuck the shit i think comes. i think everybody should take car fentanyl which is the which is the uh the um more it's like 200 times fentanyl car fentanyl so i think everybody should microdose car fentanyl every day Jeez. and then and then you're just immune to it if you just take a little bit every day you think so build up an immunity i don't know it sounds like a good idea a tolerance you a will, tolerance if you will. To, yeah by using car fentanyl yeah build up a tolerance to fentanyl so you're immune to fentanyl that fentanyl ain't no good it ain't no good man <laughs> fentanyl ain't no good <laughs>
Hell yeah. yeah. Fentanyl ain't no good. Um, no. Keep uh I don't know, man. That's whatever. If if you end up hanging out with shady people who have shady practices and they've got you know, I mean that's kinda on you. Free market, right? You do you I mean, boo boo. Enjoy yeah. your life. You consume what you want to consume and get it from reputable sources. But that's the whole point. Don't buy from strangers. Don't buy from strangers. Don't buy from strangers. That's don't I, I think that's the important thing is don't buy, buy from strangers. From strangers. Yeah. I think that's the important part, right? Holy cow, that might be the best statement ever made I, right? on any it, podcast or any social platform ever. Don't buy from strangers. Should I make that like a, uh, that should be my, uh, that should be my, um, like my catchphrase. And you know, like I always say, don't buy from strangers. <laughs> yeah. Peace. Yeah, hell no. That's hell awesome. yeah. So we got two things to uh, plug real quick. If you got to the end of this uh, podcast that's a little bit longer but not much longer than we usually do thank you um, you're awesome and we very much appreciate you we got some really nice compliments I saw Dave get some really nice compliments at the thing last week people were like hey thank you very much it's really interesting stuff that you do I love all of you yeah so um, <clears throat> we're gonna plug two things real quick the Illinois Hemp Growers Association is scheduled to host two events in September the first one is the future hemp in Illinois. Uh, we'll discuss the controversy surrounding D8 products, the farm bill, and other industry insight. The That's second awesome. one is the disc golf tournament uh, we've talked about before. It's their five-year anniversary, and it's their second annual disc golf tournament. And it's in uh, Chapel Hill Golf Course and Event Center in um, Princeton. So, you know. Nice. Um, sh shout out to those people. Uh, I wish I could, uh, uh, join you. I would love to. I wish Dave was, but he's going to be on vacation. Yeah. And the future of hemp in Illinois, that's yeah. September 15th yep. from 6 to 8 30 PM. That's in Tinley, Tinley Park. Park. I might actually go to that. That actually, yeah. It's next Friday. Oof. No, it's in uh, two weeks, Friday, September 15th. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's maybe let's go over there. See what's up. Cool. Yeah, but uh, I like these. I uh, I like this um, association. It's the Growers Association. I think it's in uh, mostly Southern Illinois. You know what I mean, out there in Carbondale. Um, so yeah. Oh, founded in 2018, the Illinois Hemp Growers Association is a women-led benefit corporation supported by the sponsorship sp uh, sponsorship donations and dues of over 1,000 grassroots members. The IHGA educates producers and consumers while representing the industry's best interests in Springfield and throughout Illinois. Um, let's yeah, go. I mean, they, yeah, that's let's go. fire. That that seems fire. I I'm I'm gonna assume that <laughs> they are good people doing good things. You know what I mean? Regardless of my views about government and stuff like that, that's how things have to go sometimes, right? Yeah. So yeah, shout out to them again. This is from uh, Illinois News Joint. You sh they even have a calendar, by the way. Illinois News Joint has this awesome calendar and you can just like check out uh, marijuana events and you should. And uh, you should. You should use them. They're good. And then the second one, interesting things happening in our area, uh, is the Hemp, Hop, and Shrooms event. This is Saturday, September 23rd, 2023, 3 to 10. This is uh, located at Carbondale's Washington Street Entertainment Block. So present presentations by SIUC Canvas Science Center and Fermentation Science Institute. All ages are welcome. Yeah, this is pretty cool. It is super cool. Yeah. Um, Carbondale's a grip away from here. Oh yeah, hours, for sure. But this the I knew you'd like this. Um, That's why I put that there. I'm a big fan. People starting to outwardly. Um, speak about because cultivation it's not, of, of everything fermentation i'm the hops is fermentation that's cool uh, i like fermentation as far as uh uh growing uh i like to use ferments so that's cool hemp is always cool because we like to grow marijuanas uh shrooms also pretty easy to cultivate nowadays you can get sterile rye grain bags with injection ports and most uh you can buy spores i mean it is legal to 
look at spores for mycology oh, under there, a microscope. There's so many. If you were to put those in a uh, syringe and put those into your sterile rye grain bag and then put that into like a, a Tupperware tub and spritz it with some water and put it under your bed, you'd probably get some mushrooms. Yeah, I I honestly am like stupid impressed by the potential That's of like the, lion's mane or turkey tail or yeah. whatever for cancer research uh, and shit. Yeah. We've seen some really cool stuff with the interjection of um, mushrooms as a whole in in medicine. Yeah. But then also, you know me, I love the psychological aspect of medicine. Who's, I was talking to somebody. Mushrooms are the booze. I was talking to somebody maybe yesterday. Oh, yeah. Somebody was like, oh, yeah, I like to microdose uh, mushroom gummies. I was like, why don't you just microdose mushrooms in a pill form? He's like, well, like, because I know exactly what I'm getting with the gummy. I was like, but do you know exactly what's in the gummy? Um, No, I think. Cause the... I, I, I know some of those like polka dot type things yeah. that are like not the actual polka dot are derived from like uh chemical as well. I've heard. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I mean. Yeah, who knows yeah. Um, what you're getting into. Um, encapsulated is fine, too. Um, I'm all for um, the progression of the psilocybin industry, Yeah, honestly. I yeah. would love to see... A thousand percent. Um, ...common talk about... I mean, obviously, I was talking about psilocybin mushrooms. I wasn't talking about lion's mane. I don't give a fuck. Fuck them. No, you, well, I've, yeah. I do care about lion's mane still. Well, I no, mean, I mean, and I obviously you was You know what being, I meant. I, yeah, I, I was didn't being coy. Like my, yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I'm a fucking psilocybin fan. You know this yeah, already. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, and I, doesn't fucking matter to me. Give it to me. I'm into it at yeah. this point. You know, I mean, um. Got that beep. B plus got that penis envy got that yep. golden teacher <clears throat> yeah yeah let's yeah. go yeah they're all they Munch all go up. pretty well i've been um you know i've encapsulated everything i don't eat these things raw i am not mike tyson about it but i uh oh dude i it's so hard for me to uh eat that's just the grossest thing ugh, i have i have so nasty. i have such a sensitive taste structure where like some things if something's not good, I am like I will get violently ill. Yeah. I can't. I can't legitimately. I can't swallow it. I, it just doesn't happen. No. And shrooms are definitely one That's of those. The, it's the worst. It's the worst. But yeah. Anyway, um, the future is trippy, man. Yeah, it's the coming really slow trippy, too. Man. It's coming really slow. The um, you're not schedule three. That yeah. is the future. I was gonna say it's now. The future is now, but then I was like, "Nah, it's actually not now yeah, at no. all," because it's taken forever to get here. Um, but so, the future looks promising for some things, things. Things are there's movers and shakers. We're doing things. There's things coming. Uh, looks like we might have a, a studio with some video here coming soon. Um, Boom. You know, uh, marijuana got rescheduled. Uh, first, take care of head. Uh, we had so much fun last week. I think that's the synopsis of our synopsis of the events, right? Smoke weed every yeah, day. Yeah, smoke weed every day. We love you. Peace. Later. <laughs>
Yo, Ding Dong, we're done here. Time to go.